Queen Elizabeth II was the country's longest serving and much loved monarch and is still arguably the most famous woman in the world. Her face gracing almost everything in sight from stamps to coins and banknotes. In 1960, she became the first British royal to have a photo featured on paper bills. With her likeness on currencies in Commonwealth countries including Canada, New Zealand and Australia. Her insignia also emblazoned on post boxes up and down the country. She is really omnipresent in terms of representing the country because among other things the royal uh, family is a branding opportunity. With the dawn of a new era slowly being ushered in with King Charles III ascending the throne, what happens now? One of the things that really comes into question is what happens to the constitutions of places where she is the queen and that's what is in their constitutions. This has been the national anthem for 70 years. God Save the Queen, now changed to God Save the King, heard at Friday's memorial service at St. Paul's. And a spontaneous rendition outside Buckingham Palace as the newly minted King Charles greeted mourners. Charles III is set to use his reign to overhaul the future of the royal family with talks of a slimmed down monarchy. But what will a King Charles III era look like as he becomes the head of 14 other Commonwealth countries? Definitely different from his mum. He cares deeply for the environment, even installing solar at his homes. And while the Queen steered away from politics, will Charles be able to do the same? As King, you are more constrained in what you can do, the top job. You are a constitutional monarch, you're the head of state, so you're you have to be guided in many ways by your government. As a prince, Charles was outspoken about a number of issues close to his heart, namely the environment. As king, during his first address to the nation, he said that he will no longer be able to champion those causes and issues. Lama Hassan, ABC News, outside Buckingham Palace.